Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to finally be sharing all of my thoughts on the Chanel Rivage palette for spring. So if you want to hear all of my thoughts on this new quad from Chanel as well as see two looks in action, then keep watching. Okay, so this little palette from Chanel, oh my goodness. As soon as I saw this along with the pink color story and then the more neutral color story that released earlier, and that was kind of being touted as this is the, going to be the Chanel spring collection. This one immediately stood out for me. I've not been someone who's a huge big fan of Chanel eyeshadows. I've had some color stories I have not minded. You know, I bought a lot of the tweed palettes. I've tried a lot of their different color stories and different formulas before and nothing has ever wowed me and I pretty much just decided that Chanel eyeshadow is just not for me it's never impactful enough I always feel like something is a bit missing I always feel a little underwhelmed and then I saw the images of this one and some swatches early on ahead of its release and it really intrigued me. I just sort of thought it's kind of something a bit different for Chanel. It's something a bit different to what I have already in my collection. Let's give it one last try. And I'm so glad I did because, spoiler alert, this is my favourite Chanel quad ever. My, sh my favourite Chanel eyeshadow palette ever by some way. I actually really love this one. So here are the swatches. And in this palette, you have this sheer sort of topper, sparkly, glittery shade. You then have two more classic, fairly understated shimmers, and then this neutral satin. This is like one layer, one pass on bare skin. And I think all of these shadows build quite a bit. You know, they start off really subtly, but all of them are actually quite buildable. You can see that second layer has really amped up how much pigment impact, how much opacity that these shadows have. I find them all to be really buildable. The formulas in here are beautiful. The satin is very subtle and lighter for my skin tone. It's a barely there bit of a transitional shade, which I find really helpful when incorporating the blue. I did wear a look just ignoring the blue in my Natasha Denona Berry Pop Cheek trio review so if you want to see this look just using these three shadows that i'm going to do shortly that is the look that i wore in my natasha denona berry pop palette so i have had this for a few weeks now and i've been wearing it in several different ways i've worn it just ignoring the blue and just a really nice everyday soft subtle neutral kind of office friendly daytime very understated look that's just really soft and pretty but really elegant and sophisticated. I've worn it as I am today with the blue as like the star of the show. And I've also worn it kind of in the same ballpark with, you know, just focusing on the neutral shadows, but with a pop of blue on the inner corner. And I love it all three ways. I think it's actually quite versatile. You know, you can get several different looks out of this and for a quad, a four pan, that's a real bonus because how much really can you get out of it? You know, how many di different looks can you really do with four shadows? But I just think the combination of textures and finishes and the shades in here make it quite versatile. You know, you can literally do as much or as little as you want. So I have been really enjoying it. Let's jump in to the tutorial of this eyeshadow look that I'm wearing today. So I'm going to show you how I use this using all four shades and the look that I've really enjoyed with this palette. And then and I will also show you a look not using the blue because I think this is actually fairly versatile for a four pan like neutral palette with a pop of blue. There's a few different ways that you can use this, but I'm gonna show you kind of the most expected way using the blue or like featuring the blue most prominently because I think that's, you know, if you're gonna buy this palette, you want the blue, right? So I'm going to use my Sonia G Builder M and I'm going to go straight into that blue absolutely beautiful it's so pretty and it starts off quite soft 
but you can build it and it has a beautiful sheen to it. Really pretty, but as a blue, it's not super intimidating or scary or, or like hard to wear. I find it quite easy to wear because it is pretty and it is more understated, but still like it's blue, you know, it's not like letting you down if you were looking for the blue. So I'm just kind of packing this all over the lid, building it up a little and towards that crease, not really going right to the inner corner. So you can see like the initial wash that you get versus building it up. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my Refa 16 and this, the sort of, it's not, it's not a matte, but it's kind of the most matte shade in here. I'd say it's a satin and we're going to just blend that, use that as a transition, use that to slightly deepen up the outer V and just use this right up into the crease towards my nose. Just give me a bit of like shape and definition to the eye. I think for me and my skin tone, I wouldn't have minded this shade being a little richer, a little deeper. But that being said, it does build really nicely. It's a very subtle, you'll see in the other look that I filmed, it's very subtle, but it is buildable as well. But you aren't gonna get a super deep, smoky, rich look out of this palette. It stays quite soft, quite understated. Okay, then using that same Builder M from Sonia G, we're going to use this gloriously sparkly number and I'm going to focus that in the center of the lid and that's just gonna make that blue like icy frosty it's gonna amp up the sparkle it is going to take the impact off the blue so it's going to slightly tone that blue down so you know you may want to do this or you may want to leave the blue super popping but this gives me a very like the Ice Queen from the Chronicles of Narnia vibe. Is that just me? It's a sort of frosty, almost like blue-gray, which I love. Just adding a little bit of that brown neutral shade back in to blend those edges all together. And then with my Refa 21, I'm gonna take this final champagne shade to highlight my inner corner. You get a slight amount of fallout from that white sparkly shadow. It is obviously quite a sort of looser sparkly shade. So that one you might get a little bit of fallout, which I don't mind, it's no big deal. Mascara, of course. And this is the finished look that I'm wearing in today's video. Okay, so the second look that I'm going to show you today is the one eliminating the blue, just focusing on the neutral shadows in this palette. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the satin shadow and I'm working that all up into the crease, pretty much all over the place, all over the eye, all into the corner, all up into the crease and I'm building that up. This shadow, again, is really buildable. It starts off super, super barely there soft on me and it can be built to a nice transitional shade, very smooth, very easy to blend. And then I'm using those two lighter shimmers. You can do as much or as little as you like with these. You could use the champagne shimmer all over the lid and then that icy sparkle in the inner corner or you could layer that over the top 
of that shimmer and get a higher impact, more sparkly, more shimmery look. So you can see that this is a much more subtle, soft, daytime, everyday look without the blue. And like I said, you could always pop that blue on the inner corner to add a bit of fun and a bit of color to this look very, very easily. So there you have it, two different looks, quite different looks with this palette, given that it is just a little cheeky quad. I'm really enjoying it. It's fun, it's easy to use, everything is really pretty, everything is very smooth and flattering on more mature eyes and texture, and there's barely any fallout. The only fallout that you get is from the sparkly shadow, which is to be expected with that kind of glittery, sparkly, loose suppressed shadow. But I think it's totally worth it to get a couple of specks of fallout and really add that impact and that reflection, which is so pretty from that shadow. You can build that one up in the intensity as well quite a bit to either just lighten up the blue or lighten up the base shadow or get a bit of reflection in the center of the lid. This is just such a nice, little quad I have really enjoyed it and as someone who previously has not been like that excited and impressed by Chanel eyeshadows you know me I am a Pat McGrath Natasha Denona Sydney Grace type of girl I want like more is more to me I like impact I like really impactful metallics lots of sparkle and shimmer and over the top shadow but I want it to be wearable colors in my comfort zone I want it to be pretty and I want to be able to wear it you know on a boring school run type of day I don't want to have to be going out on New Year's Eve to be able to wear the shadows and I think that while this is quieter it's still not you know a Pat McGrath palette it is still a typical Chanel sophisticated quieter more understated when it comes to the color story and when it comes to the finishes this is something that I think is a little bit more special, a little bit more unique to my collection and something that when I finish my eye look, I actually really appreciate and I'm really happy with and I don't feel underwhelmed. I don't feel like something is missing. So there you have it, my new favorite ever, by some way, it's not even close, but my favorite ever Chanel eyeshadow palette and I'm absolutely in love with it. What do you guys think of this collection? Were you excited about it? Were you still underwhelmed? Did you feel like this was something a bit different for Chanel or just more of the same? Please let me know all of your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.